What's up guys? Welcome back to Matt DIY. Thanks for tuning in today. So we did a little research with the 2012 Chevy Impala. Found out the parts are cheap for this thing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do it right and do it up. Um, it was kind of borderline suspension when we looked last video. Um, definitely needs replaced. So we're going to go ahead and do the suspension. We're going to do the brakes in this video. I'm going to bring you guys along, not necessarily a how-to type thing. There's plenty of those out on YouTube. But um, just as kind of showing you an average guy, me who has, like, I've never been a mechanic, guys, just do this stuff at home. Um, but just kind of show you, you know, how I do it and how it goes, what I run into, issues. I'll give you some tips and tricks along the way, but for the most part, I'm um, just going to speed it up for you so you can see how we do these things. So we're going to go ahead and start with the rear brakes because you want to start with the furthest back um, from the front where the fluid travels. So we're going to start with the back and then bleed those, get those done. Then we're actually going to change the position of the car and actually put it up on jack stands. And that way we can get to the front suspension on both sides and accomplish the tie rods, control arms, and that sway bar that's uh, cracked and broken. So should be pretty good, guys. I'm excited to jump in and get this stuff done on this car. And once that stuff's done, all that's left is really uh, the front bumper and then, you know, some cleaning up, making it look nice. So uh, excited about this one. But before we get started, guys, go ahead and be sure to subscribe down below to the channel. If you want to see more stuff like this, want to see these cars uh, to completion, things like that. But uh, what do you say we go ahead, jump in, get these wheels off, start with the rear brakes. So probably a good point for a tip here guys as you saw there and working on cars is never super easy but basically what we had is we had a bolt that was let's see if i can get this back up here that was galled in here right just completely corroded and stuck so no matter which way you turn it and there's not even threads in here but no matter which way you turn it it was just completely corroded and you can kind of see uh, if we can get it to focus you can kind of see the corrosion there in the bolt yeah it's coming in pretty good um so all i did and this is a tip for you is don't just crank it home because you will certainly crack the bolt off and uh let me tell you how i know that been there done that before right so um if you just heat it up you saw me heat up this outer portion and just slowly back and forth and back and forth until you get it freed up enough until it starts to go. And then once it was loose in there, then I could tap it out. Luckily, the other side, um, this little sleeve here, the slider sleeve actually slid off, um, which was great. That's actually the part that usually gets stuck. 
Um, but once that slid off, then I was able to work the bolt and we did get it out. Thank goodness. Um, hopefully the other side's not too bad. And you want to try not to hang it by the, by the, uh, hose too, while you're working on it. Um, here we've got, um, parking brake too. So I'm not too concerned about, uh, about letting it hang here since it's got the parking brake as well. But, uh, but yeah, just a little tip there on a stuck bolt just heat it up and then just slowly work it back and forth until you get it to uh, free up for you guys so for the first time working on a Chevy took me a little longer than I would have liked but uh you know what it came out good um the biggest thing a couple things I wanted to tell you guys is one make sure to always grease up your sliders which are the um the parts that move there and there's one on the bottom it kind of the whole, allows the whole caliper to shift while you're uh, driving and braking make sure to grease those up and make sure they're free moving um the other thing on this it actually has a twist in uh caliper i'm not sure what year they started that but instead of just compressing it which i was trying to do um see guys i'm, I'm an amateur too um you actually have to twist it in so i went ahead and uh twisted it it actually went right in real easy um when i started twisting so um and actually now we're going to go ahead and bleed this one real quick uh put it back together and then i'm going to go ahead and do the other side probably without you guys because there's less room over there to get a camera in um, then I'll come back when we actually start the front suspension and everything. But uh, let's go ahead and bleed this first. Okay, guys, so the bleed brakes actually got this cool nifty bottle here. Um, it's got a hose that runs into it and a little bit of brake fluid in the bottom. And the hose actually um, goes all the way down into the brake fluid. So I hooked this up to the bleeder screw and you can see there's already, uh, maybe you can see, I don't know. Yeah, there's already a little bit of brake fluid coming in. Um... So what happens is I'm going to go in the car and pump the brakes a few times and it's going to push fluid out of there and into the bottle. And I'm going to do that probably five, six, seven, maybe even eight times just to make sure all the, uh, all the air is out of the lines. And then I'm going to come back here, tighten that and then take off the hose and, um, we're done. And this one's bleeded. So, um, I'm going to go ahead in the car and start pumping and I'll let you guys watch that. All right, guys, so we got the rear brakes done. <clears throat> um, that went uh, fairly smoothly. A couple things on the other side that, you know, just typical corrosion and whatnot. But we got those done. So now we're on the front. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tear down this suspension. So this is going to be this is going to be fun, guys. It looks interesting, um, especially the tie rods pretty far back in there. So it should be fun. 
Um, but we're going to go ahead and actually um, take the tie rod off first, get it out of the way, and then I think we'll work with the sway bar next, and then probably lastly, uh, pop the control arm down and put the new control arm on. So that's the plan as of now. guys welcome back it's the next day here for me same video for you just wanted to show you we did get everything torn down the control arms gone sway bar is gone and the tie rods are gone so we're actually going to go ahead and reassemble i did it on the other side too i'll show you um just so you guys know but i didn't film too much over here because there's really no room to film but um other side's done too you can see no control arm or anything there so all that's left now is uh, reassembly, and hopefully everything goes pretty smoothly. And then lastly, we'll do the front brakes after reassembly's done, and those should be pretty straightforward. But uh, yeah, just going to go ahead and start slapping everything back together. guys so pro tip and sorry i didn't show you more there um it was getting uh a little bit intense so i had to figure some things out especially that sway bar um you know when you buy cheaper parts too not everything fits absolutely perfect sometimes you gotta work around it but anyhow what i wanted to show you was the tie rod um so i have a method of doing this because i've done tie rods a lot now and it works really well um so what actually what i do is i on the old one I just leave it as one, right? I don't take it loose. A lot of people take them loose, but I don't. I'll show you why. I count the threads. Let me get this out of here. I count the threads right there from the end of the shaft to the nut. And I label how many that is. And for this one, it was about 18. Then I go on the new one, and I put that nut so that it's 18 threads back 
Let me get some light here. I put that nut so that it's 18 threads from the back of the new shaft. And because the nut's a little bit smaller, I maybe add one more thread just for a little consistency to line up with the uh, old one. Then I hold the two shafts next to each other. I don't have a third hand at the moment. Uh, let me see if I can make this happen. So then I hold this shaft right next to the old one. And I compare the two. And I make sure they're lined up. And that, almost every time, gets me super close. Um, obviously, you still need an alignment. There's no getting out of that. But that gets me super close to where the car is not dangerous or driving like complete crap. Um, to get to the shop. So just a little quick tip there guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up these tie rods and come back show you the final result All right guys figured I'd take a pause there before we do the front brakes Which is the last part and just show you what everything looks like and uh, Let me get some uh, Some light here. I'm happy with the way it came out Everything looks really nice. You can see the new control arm there brand new inner and outer tie rods and the brand new sway bar with the link. So that all did really need done. Um, and it looks really nice now. The car's gonna rag great. It's gonna pass inspection, no problem. And now we don't have any worries. And guys, all these parts, let me think, I believe, including all the brakes, $220 for everything. Um, just the labor, you know, it's... <laughs> I can't say this was an easy one, guys. This was, uh, it was intense, not gonna lie. It fought me every way, you know, everywhere. Getting those uh, rubber boots on with the sway bars is absolutely horrible. Um, yeah, it's a challenge, but that's what I like about working on cars, guys. There's always something that makes you think out of the box and, and you know, makes you uh, think about how you can fix it. But anyways, um, next we're gonna go ahead and tackle the front brakes and then we're done with this uh, video. Alrighty guys, as you see there, we got everything wrapped up. This was a uh, this was a lot of work. This was a tough one. Uh, but we got front brakes, rear brakes, whole front suspension done. And even though I got those tie rods as close as I could, I can already tell looking at the tires, I'm gonna have to limp this thing down to the uh, alignment shop. But uh, hey, you know, you try to get as close as you can. Sometimes you get, you get it right on. Sometimes, you know, you just gotta be careful. But uh, anyways guys, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to subscribe down below. Let me know what you think, comment, uh, like this video if it helped you out in any way. Also, let me know, do you guys like these kind of videos where I sort of speed up what I'm doing? Or would you rather it be more real time, uh, slow process, everything kind of worked out like that? Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I'd be curious to find out. But uh, anyways, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Until next time, get out, do it yourself.